Good afternoon, everyone. Oh, I love it. Everyone is all this pink. We're getting ready to get our uh, meeting started. You're at the beginning of the program, so you won't have to stick around after you get your presentation for our special uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Day here at Hamilton County. But we start every meeting with silent prayer. And uh, I'd like to add a prayer to all of the breast cancer and cancer survivors, fighters, and a special prayer to those who fought and have gone on and know that we're continuing to fight for them uh, in their memory. So if we could have a moment of silence. Amen. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I make a motion to approve the minutes of the previous meeting. Second. Commissioner Reese. Yes. Commissioner Driehaus. Yes. Commissioner Summer Dumas. Yes. Okay. Today we're here for our special Breast Cancer Awareness uh, Day in Hamilton County. And we have a lot of folks, survivors, doctors, organizations who are in this fight. Uh, for us to unite to fight not only breast cancer, but all cancer. Um, it, is, it is an equal opportunity killer, and we've got to be an equal opportunity fighter. So we have a proclamation that we're going to do first for, and I'll pass you your, this, this is mine, but I'll let you use All right. <laughs> I don't have anything. Uh-oh, you don't have your, no. I, I, we will share. That very good. Let's Sounds see. great. Um, we have a breast cancer awareness proclamation and several organizations are highlighted in the proclamation. We're gonna read that proclamation and then the representatives from those organizations will come down and present them, present you the proclamation. Then we have a proclamation, another proclamation we're gonna uh, have for Mr. Butts and then we have the certificate presentation. Okay, so this is a big deal so we're gonna take our time with it. Um, Proclamation reads, proclamation recognizing October as Breast Cancer Awareness Month, whereas in 1985, the American Cancer so Society began National Breast Cancer Awareness Month as an annual campaign to raise awareness about the impact of breast cancer. Whereas the National Breast Cancer Foundation estimates one in eight women in the United States will be diagnosed with breast cancer in her lifetime. And according to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, an estimated 42,000 women and 500 men die from breast cancer annually in the United States. And whereas breast cancer is the most common cancer in American women, except for skin cancers, and on average every two minutes, a woman is diagnosed with breast cancer in the United States. And whereas according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, one out of every 100 breast cancers diagnosed in the United States is found in a man. And whereas there are over 3.8 million breast cancer survivors in the United States, and whereas the Hamilton County Sheriff and Cincinnati Police Department wear pink badges yearly in support of Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and whereas in Hamilton County, there are many organizations and partners that continue to help breast cancer patients search for a cure through vital research and educate our community about the importance of early detection being the best protection, including the American Cancer Society, Making Strides Against Breast Cancer, UC Health, the Barrett Cancer Center, Tri Health, Sinai Temple Number 59, Shriners, and court number 35 doctors, the Susan G. Coleman Foundation, the Cincinnati Police Department, the Cincinnati Fire Department, the Hamilton County Sheriff's Office, and the Black and White Cancer Survivors Foundation. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the Board of County Commissioners of Hamilton County, Ohio, 
hereby proclaims the month of October 2023 as Breast Cancer Awareness Month in all of Hamilton County. And now we would, what we're going to do is ask you to line up. We'll stay up here. We'll take, uh, shake your hand. Uh, these organizations, I'm going to name a few, just line up and come uh, here, and we'll give you your proclamation. Um, on the proclamation, uh, the American Cancer Society representative, followed by Making Strides Against Breast Cancer, followed by UC Health, followed by the Barrett Cancer Center, Tri Health, followed by Tri Health, followed by Sinai Temple 59 and Court 35 Daughters, the Susan G. Coleman Foundation representative, the Cincinnati Police Department representative. We have our new fire chief, Cincinnati Fire Chief, up here. The Hamilton County Sheriff's Department, Sheriff McGuffey. Um, and a uh, representative from the Black and White Cancer Survivors Foundation. And if you, uh, Will you permission you want us to go? Yes. No oh, problem. You'll have to come here. Thank you. Okay. okay. So we'll shake their hand. Come up with the This way. Sit down and take it. Y'all stay here. Where'd y'all go? Y'all I thought I had it. I thought I had it together. I looked up. So, but Mr. Treehouse, you let them out. <laughs> we guys, keep them in. And we'll take our picture here. Where'd the sheriff go? Oh, and the fire chief. <laughs> Mr. Ludo, you let him out of here. <laughs> we let y'all out. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, now you can go. Now you can. Thank you. Doc, would you like to say a moment of, want to say a word right here about your work in radiology? Introduce yourself. Okay, everybody, we're still in session. We're still in session. Getting the word out, you know, making the proclamation, do all this is what matters most to all of us. So uh, us as doctors, I mean, we're just a small part of this. Um, we're happy to do what we do. We're very passionate about what we want to do. Um, so really, thank you to everybody here. And making this happen. Thank you very much. Uh, and I want to say that uh, Dr. Boom and others, we're, I'm still working on trying to get this cancer caucus together because there's funding in Washington. 
and our numbers are going up in Hamilton County. So we want to, I know we all have been working with our lobbyists on bringing more money down here. And we think if we have, you know, some kind of caucus group, you know, to bring those dollars here to Hamilton County, because we want definitely a cure. Vice President Driehaus, would you like to say something to the group before we go to the next? Group? Well, I just want to th thank that group for being here. Uh, they are the leaders in this community when it comes to fighting breast cancer. And uh, we wouldn't be where we are without those people that have uh, gone and done the research and, and figured out ways to find the cure for cancer. So thank, thanks to all of them for all their work. Thank you. Commissioner Dumas? Thank you. I just want to... Uh, of course, uh, thank everyone for their hard work and not giving up all the survivors. I want to thank you. We'll be recognized you, you in a minute, but all the agencies that are moving forward to make things new and all the new innovative techniques and strategies that are coming forth. So thank you all for your research and your work that you've done. Thanks. Thank you. Our next presentation, we hear a lot about women and breast cancer. And uh, I'm, I was guilty of it. Um, my, so my best friend, one of my best friends from college, uh, who also ended up being my chief of staff after college uh, when I was at City Hall, and uh, his wife told me after because she said he didn't want anyone to know. Um, and he is, uh, you know, cancer free today. But men can have breast cancer as well. Um, their next honoree is someone who um, is making sure and speaking out and doing a lot of work, uh, real men wear pink. And so uh, I wanted to honor him today. We wanted to honor him today. Um, and I thought it was important because you don't see men, uh, if they have that, like my friend, they kind of be quiet about it. You don't know a lot about it. But he has said, no, we've got to be out there. So we have a proclamation recognizing Marvin Butts, if he would come forward to the podium. Many of us know him as Mr. Bubbles and all of that, um, but um, we have a proclamation recognizing Marvin Butts' outstanding achievements and contributions to Hamilton County. Whereas Marvin Butts is a beautiful reflection of his community here in Hamilton County and Cincinnati, as he has embraced not only the city through years of service, but the neighborhood of Pendleton, in which him and his wife with their business is located. Whereas Mr. Butts through his servant leadership has been an advocate, educator, consoler, and cheerleader for breast cancer awareness and hospice of Cincinnati, along with implementing his dynamic leadership on the executive board of Lighthouse Youth Services, the board of Cincinnati College Preparatory Academy, and the Hamilton County Sheriff's Community Adversary, uh, Advisory, Community Advisory Board. And whereas, in 2006, Mr. Butts founded the Butts Family Foundation as a tribute to his mother who lost her battle to breast cancer, which focuses on cancer awareness and strengthening families while educating the minority communities about the warning signs associated with cancer and preventive matters. And whereas, in 2016, Mr. Butts joined the Real Men Wear Pink slash Making Strides Against Cancer organization, serving as a cheerleader, advocating and educating people about breast cancer. And whereas, Mr. Butts has been bestowed with many honors throughout his career, such as Lighthouse Youth Services Beacon of Light Humanitarian Award honoree, a Governor of the State of Ohio Jefferson Award honoree, an Ohio House of Representatives Public Service honoree, a Cincinnati Enquirer Hometown Hero honoree, a WCPO Hometown Hero Award honoree, and a Fox 19 Success Story honoree. And whereas Mr. Butts, through all of his community giving, has bettered lives by letting others know that someone cares. Mr. Butts gives hope and the best of himself to those who have the least. Now, therefore, I was getting all smiley about what you were saying. I was like, I'm smiling like, this is awesome. <laughs> now, therefore, we have proclaimed that the Board of Commissioners hereby congratulates Marvin Butts on his professional career achievements and commends his contributions to the fight against breast cancer in Hamilton County. And be it further proclaimed that the Board of County Commissioners declares and proclaims that October 27th, 2023,
be known as Marvin Butts Day in all of Hamilton County. Now, before you say anything, we're going to open it up to my colleagues, Vice President Driehaus, to well, add any... What more is there to say? <laughs> well, you're going to say more, but... Uh, congrats. We will be remiss if I didn't mention the fact that I also lost four of my sisters to breast cancer. Oh. And uh, that was the main force because after I lost my mother at such a young age, those four women actually raised me. Wow. Mm. That's the reason why I do the work that I do. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate everybody for acknowledging that, but the fight and the battle has just begun. Yes. 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 Vice President Drew, you said, thank you. Add anything? I could not have said it any better than that. Thank you for the heartfelt comments about the work that you're doing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Commissioner Dumas. Yes, I've been knowing Mr. Bus for many, many, many years. Um, and as long as I've known him, he doesn't have to do anything. He puts his whole self uh, into it. And I certainly appreciate it. I know the residents of Ham Hamilton County do the same. So thank you for all you do. Mr. Butts, we appreciate everything. You and your wife, Tabitha, she, where is she at? She's videoing. <laughs> Thank you for the work that you do. And particularly, like I said, in this, uh, I was able to send what you were doing down to my friend when he was going through it. And it, it was very helpful, he said, to know that he was not alone. So I just want to thank you for that and known you for a long time. And uh, you protect a lot of people. You have security for a lot of folks. And of uh, my prom, my dad said, I got the person to take you in the car. <laughs> Mr. Butts, pull me every step of the way. I said, oh, man, I thought I was going to finally get ready to do something by myself. But uh, I really appreciate all that you have, have done. And I, and I appreciate you guys. And I, on another note, I just want to let out all the women that hear my voice to remember the 3D mammogram is extremely important. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> We're going to come around and get a picture with you. Hey, what's next? Okay, we have a lot of um, survivors, fighters, and uh, this is our third year. Um, and one of the things we want to do is just make sure we got certificates to say, keep fighting, we appreciate you. And uh, so we have some certificates to give out. Um, I'm thinking, where is Bridget, how she wants to do this, but... Uh, she went on back, everybody left me with this, huh? That's great. What we would do, Bridget, should we have them come up like that or you want us down here? We're gonna have you come up, all right. So we'll first start off with uh, Vice President Driehaus will uh, announce her, the certificates, the first group. Okay. And uh, Commissioner Dumas will, the next group. So when you hear your name, come on up. We'll take a photo. And then you go. You can. You can't go on down to leave on this one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's right. Okay. All right, Vice so, President. Um, I'm recognizing Judge Ginger Bach.
please come forward. Uh, who is in the room? And then my second was Jan Michelle Lemon Kearney, but I don't see her, so we're here. Is she? Oh, there you are. All right. I didn't see you. Vice Mayor. Commissioner Dumas. Thank you so much. Um, my honorees are as follows. Angela N. Hilton, please come up. Cincinnati police officer also. Congratulations. Here you go. You can come right over here. It's so funny. Uh, when we were standing to take the group picture, I felt something in my back. I said, yeah, is that in my And it was the big gun that Angela had. And I was trying to move it. I said, oh, my God. Okay. Here we go.
Okay, we had um, one of the things we do, um, people can send in, and we ask people, we, don't, we wanted everyone to get a certificate because everyone who's in this fight deserves a certificate. Um, we have Monique Kemper, who is a, a member of our, our employee team from Jaws and Family Services, Section Chief. Come on up, Monique Kemper. And um, if you don't mind, we're going to take a picture with three of us, but I'm going to ask Mr. Ludo to join us as well. Next, we have uh, Sherry Hughes, who played a huge role in getting state law changed. She's the director of strategic community engagement and a spokesperson for Cincinnati Cancer Advisors. Regina Shipman, um, who is the Global Quality Systems Director at Procter & Gamble. And one year, one year cancer free. Ruby Crawford Hemfield, who is Assistant Chief Nursing Officer at UC Health. Britt, who is a choreographer and owner of Dance Fix. I hope I get this, uh, correct me if I mispronounce it. Aaron Gratch. I mispronounced it. I got it right, yes. Program coordinator at Women's Imaging at Mercy Health. Erin also, she gave powerful testimony at the State House to help change the law for breast cancer. So let's give her another round of applause. Her own testimony. Paula Mayer, right, who's a writer. Entertainment and Radio. Three years for me. Yeah. 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 Yeah
topic is pictures. I want to tell y'all something. I was, and one thing we got in common as women and as men in this room, that we have the belief and faith in God. And I'm going to tell you something. The devil can't have something he ain't never had, and that's all of us in this room. Amen. <laughs> They were able to make it, um, but Sharon, Sierra, Shireen, I'm sorry. <laughs> will you come in? Miss Humphreys will come and accept it on her behalf. Uh, she's in California, um, I believe, doing some work as it relates to breast cancer awareness. So we thank her for that. Final one, um, I don't know if he was able to make it. I want y'all to keep uh, his wife in prayer. She's getting ready to have surgery. She was in remission and uh, has come back, and uh, we're going to pray that it's going to be great. Uh, so I wanted this uh, so that he could, he said if he could give this to his wife, because when you're in these times, every little thing of positivity helps. And this is in honor of Janelle Easley, uh, and her husband is Stephen Easley of Easley Blessed, so we'll make sure she gets this and keep her in prayer. She'll be going into uh, surgery the next couple weeks. So thank you all. Our chair's back. Our musical chair. I think this one is mine. <laughs> thank you all for our breast cancer awareness um, and understanding that uh, we are united in the fight with you. I do want to thank uh, my staff, uh, my chief of staff, Veda Stevens, uh, Deontay Morris, I want to thank uh, Teresa Burns now. She just had a wedding. Uh, she's a married woman now. She wants everybody to make sure you understand. Uh, <laughs> and she's also a, uh, a uh, veteran, and she helps out a lot. And we thank you for your help. Uh, Miss Viola Brown, who is one of our seniors, and she had everything. Both of them had everything looking beautiful. Uh, in there, so uh, there is Grater's Cake. I only do Grater's Cakes. I love Grater's Cakes. He said, are you going to have that Grater's Cake? Yes. <laughs> so uh, thank you all. And Carmen Thomas, uh, and uh, representing her sorority, uh, is here volunteering as well. So we want to thank them for helping make all of today beautiful. Uh, and thank you to our photographer uh, as well, and all of the staff uh, for helping get the word out uh, for that. So. Thank you all um, again, and uh, thank you to my colleagues uh, for uh, allowing this uh, to happen today. We really appreciate it. So I think I, I didn't miss anybody, Veda, if you're around. If I did miss anybody, blame Veda Stevens. <laughs> <laughs> you know where to find them. <laughs> but no, I do want to, I do want to thank you all. Uh, this is our third year doing this. We're going to light up uh, the lights that we control uh, pink. And uh, we, I know we have uh, purple for domestic violence, uh, but we're going to have a couple of days pink for breast cancer awareness. And also going to ho hopefully we got some new lights at the Cincinnati Black Music Walk of Fame. So we're going to try to have that pink uh, as well. Uh, my mother died from uh, breast cancer and uh, going through that process. Uh, she fought for 12 years. She went to her mission twice. Um, and just going through that, she passed uh, away on December 28th in the holiday season. And so um, a lot has been better since she uh, had it, but I do have to give a special thanks to the Barrett Center uh, because when I was with her and they said she had stage four, they thought she only had a few months to live, three to four months. They kept her going for 12 years, and that's incredible. And that's a God's blessing. So. So that's why, uh, you know, this is always important. I, you know, she got 12 years. I want the next person to have a lifetime. And uh, we're going we're gonna to work hard to make sure Hamilton County get these numbers down. And, 
and be able to get the funding that we're supposed to have. And if we can get a vaccination for COVID in a short amount of time, which is very important, uh, I like. I think that could be a model of how we got that we have the geniuses uh, to be able to get some type of cure for all these different types of cancer that is just taking our children, our mothers, our fathers, our grandmothers, our aunties. It's taking everybody. So thank you all so much. We have a very exciting meeting down here. We're always exciting. You're welcome to stay. But if you have to go, we understand. <laughs> thank you so much. We appreciate it. And we will take a two-minute, let's take a two-minute recess so everybody can get out, and we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. Welcome back. We have a calendar. Uh, we'll open it up for, I'm oh, sorry, anybody on Zoom that wants to talk to us? No comments. No comments. Uh, anybody here that had comments? No comments. Okay, we'll open it up. Vice President Drew House for comments or motions. Thank you. Um, just have a couple of things. I uh, was at an event this morning, it was a hearing, a Senate hearing on housing. A Senate Traveling Committee came down to Hamilton County 
Uh, they've been traveling all over the state of Ohio to try to get a better understanding of housing needs in the state. Uh, so I testified on behalf of the county commission. Uh, Senator Reynolds from the Columbus area was the chair of the committee. And so I gave her a, kind of a lay of the land of what's going on here by way of the need. Uh, and we have identified 40,000 units of the deficit uh, a number of years ago in Hamilton County. We have started to chip away at that. And so I told them about uh, the investment that this board has made through our ARPA dollars and ask them that if there were any ARPA dollars at the state level, we would be happy to be in partnership with them and uh, utilize those dollars in an effective way here because what we're doing is leveraging with the city of Cincinnati, the private sector um, through CDF. And we've got a model and we say this a lot about ourselves, but it's true. We've got a model that works. Um, it's a collaborative model. We are getting the biggest bang for the buck that we can. And so uh, beyond the uh, tax credits that are available at the state, which I thank them for, um, just said if, if they were to allocate any ARPA dollars for housing, we stand at the ready to accept those dollars and perform uh, more by, in way, by way of housing in this community. Um, so that was this morning. And then I opened up the recycling conference yesterday morning. Um, this is a conference where a bunch of recyclers come in from all over the state. Uh, these are folks that are in the solid waste districts. They're also people that are um, administer landfills, uh, these regional <coughs> landfills that are throughout the state. And so I got to brag a little bit about our diversion rates. Uh, Hamilton County has a 56% diversion rate of diverting trash out of the landfill. That is the highest percentage of any urban county in the state of Ohio. So I welcomed them to uh, Hamilton County and then proceeded to tell them all the great things that we're doing uh, and how serious we are about embracing um, diversion, embracing um, or conversations about organics and just always trying to keep uh, stuff, trash um, out of the landfill. So. Uh, I was honored to do that. And then lastly, I attended um, the Portman Center for Policy Solutions. There was a, a ribbon cutting for the center up at the University of Cincinnati. It is a center uh, led by Senator, yeah, Senator Rob Portman, who has recently retired from the US Senate, uh, that talks about doing things in a bipartisan way to get things done. And so I'm honored to sit on that board, and I was glad to be at the ribbon cutting. I think that'll be a good thing for the city of Cincinnati. There are th these kinds of policy centers exist in Cleveland, they exist in Columbus, and now we have one in Cincinnati. So it's, it's to encourage young people to think about not villainizing one another in public service, but rather working in a collaborative way to get things done. So that's all I have. Thank you. And of course, this celebration was fantastic. I uh, thank you, Commissioner Reese, for continuing to do this year after year and allowing some of us to recognize those in our community who are cancer survivors, reminding us of those we have lost, but also celebrating that there are survivors among us. And while they still are struggling with some of their health issues, um, they have fought through and survived. And it's, it's really, it is something to celebrate. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thanks for telling the state we can do something with that right. money they have yeah. laying around. <laughs> Commissioner Dubis. Thank you so much. Um, I also want to thank you for the cancer awareness reception, all of this that went into it. I really want to compliment you on that we went beyond our purview. In other words, who I knew, who you knew, and you went out into the community. And, and that was so unique for me. I love that and that we need to do more of that. So I want to thank you for that. Thank you. Um, so I um, am a part of the White House Office of Intergovernmental Affairs weekly. They have a call which I participate in. You know, the, each speaker speaks for about two to three minutes about major issues that are going on in the United States. Nothing really um, big that I think I need to let the board know, but I'll continue to uh, participate in that. Um, I also participate in the demolition of Lincoln Heights High School. Um, finally, uh, the, the high school is coming down. There was a lot of resistance somewhat from uh, the residents and also a lack of funding. So having the, that being said, the resistance is not as much. They passed an ordinance in 2015 to tear it down. Now it's 2023, but at least we got it done. We got the funding, and it will happen, and something even greater will be on that site. So I was really excited about that. I attended the 100th, 100th stop of the 513 relief bus celebration, also in Lincoln Heights. Lots of people attended, and it's just a, a great um, monumental um, 
how can I say? I'm trying to think of a good word. From a oh, hundred is big anyway. So to have one hundredth stop that met all the needs of our uh, community will continue to meet the needs of our community in any area you can think of. We're having to stop uh, one part of the deliverance of service, but other than that, uh, it's a great thing um, that we celebrated that. And also, um, I was part of the youth sports assessment that was uh, done by Victus. We're looking currently and getting opinions of all of us and also stakeholders of whether or not we think that a youth sports arena is necessary, something that we want to do as far as a county. And so it's just starting, started yesterday. Um, and so we'll see how that goes. Um, and also I participated in the Hamilton County rebranding webinar to look at, we, you know, Hamilton County is a lot different than it was 2015, you know, years ago. And so we're looking at how can we rebrand Hamilton County where everyone can relate. What do we stand for? What is our vision? What are our priorities? And so it was just a great discussion uh, with the people that were thinking about having to do that rebranding. So I appreciate uh, being involved in that. Lastly, I just wanted to make a general comment about our purchasing and processing system that we use here in the county. And um, things are just uh, going too slow for me. Um, when I say that, there are certain things that are urgent that need to be dealt with right away. Um, and so maybe there needs to be a different department that deals with the urgency, the immediacy of problems because the purchasing and processing of um, invoices and things like that are just going too slow, especially when we're talking about people that we're trying to serve. So, you know, it worked many years ago. Does it work now? I don't know, but I think we need to evaluate that whole purchasing and processing system because I am not satisfied with how slow, how long people have to wait for monies and services. So I'm just asking the board to just consider um, some agreement or review it for yourselves. We know we've experienced it uh, where we've tried to get checks out either to vendors or uh, to youth or whatever it is, you have a great idea and then, um, you know, it just moves too slow. We got to move faster. And how we do that, I'm going to depend on our administrator to not do it all for us to give our input, but I'm not satisfied with the process. And that's all I have. Thank you uh, very much. And uh, I, I definitely agree with you on we've got to come up with a new process because, you know, people can't wait, as you've indicated. Um, and that's a big part because we vote on the money, and I think we vote on it in a timely fashion. But then once we vote on it, we thought, you know, people not getting it, that's mm -hmm. a problem. Mm -hmm. So I uh, join with you in, in asking for some type of report on how we're going to fix that or new technology or something um, to get that done. People have to be paid on time. Um, so I, I definitely agree with that. A um, couple things. First of all, uh, today, incredible, um, again, I just can't say enough, um, inspiring and incredible and in all of the, the activities that take place this month for breast cancer awareness, the walks, the, uh, the jogs, the events, um, just wanna, I can't say enough, so uh, thank you all again. Um, in addition, I attended the uh, Urban League of Greater Southwest Ohio, their 75th anniversary and uh, the CEO is Christy Coons. And I wanna just give a big shout out to, uh, to Christy and her entire team at uh, the Urban League, who put on a fantastic, uh, epic uh, event for the gala. It reminded me when the National Urban League came to town. And usually, you know, of course, National has a lot more resources and they step up and they put on a, a great conference and great galas, but our, local uh, Urban League, I think, uh, topped it off. And uh, it was, the theme was shine bright like a diamond, of course, 75 being diamond. And uh, they brought in, uh, you know, bands, a second win, and uh, then they brought in Kid Capri as a celebrity DJ. And uh, all of our, we all were limping 
back to the car. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, uh, locally, DJ Vader and the YOLO band. And they just had you, they had you dancing from the time you walked into place to the time you tried to get to your car. And uh, it was just great seeing everyone coming together for a great cause. Uh, and Curtis Fuller was the MC, and it was just a, a phenomenal event. Uh, Johnny on the spot, uh, they put the whole piece together uh, as a uh, company, and I thought they did a phenomenal job. So wanted to uh, highlight that. And they had several people coming from out of town that came to it as well. So we did a little showing off about how, again, how great we are down here in Hamilton County. So a uh, big shout out to them. Um, I also want to thank them. They did a uh, tour of all their staff, part of their 75th anniversary. Uh, they went through the Cincinnati Black Music Walk of Fame and had a big day there and took photos for the 75th. And so I want to thank them for that as well. Um, in addition, I was also at the Lincoln Heights uh, High School demolition, and it was, uh, they called it bittersweet, and that's exactly what it was. Um, I saw so much emotion because there's so many positive memories. A lot of times we see a, a, a building and we just look at the building like, oh man, it's, it's raggedy, it's old. It's, well, it's kind of old because it's had a lot come through there. It's been through a lot. And to hear the stories where Council Member Laverne Mitchell talk about the history behind it. Um, the thing I liked also, after it was not a school, I do like the fact that they were able to get Senator Finan, he was the senator then, he's mayor now, actually bring some state offices to come down there and do state services and pay rent. And those are the kind of things I want to see from the state myself in, in 2023, 2024, bringing more of those down here and coming into some of our facilities and be able to pay rent, whether it's in the satellite office or other things that we have coming forward. I know Commissioner Dumas is pushing for that. But uh, I thought that was something. I was happy to hear that, um, that history, but also the history of what came out of there, the championships, the, the teachers and the teachers who built leaders and uh, they cared about the community. It wasn't just I'm um, going to school, and, you know, learning. They taught them how to be men and women and how to uh, do things that are not in the textbooks, uh, leadership. And so that was big. And then it really hit me when um, Council Member um, Linda Childs Jeter, who was my teacher, and I didn't know. And for the first time, I got to see her, and she was shooken up in tears. She said, this is the right thing to do but just all the memories that were coming from there. She, she was overwhelmed with emotion. Um, so I wanna congratulate Mayor Mumphrey and uh, the entire council and their leadership uh, for being able to get this move forward. Uh, the Port Authority, uh, the county, because we have put funding available. We've, we've done almost a million dollars in the big grant to uh, Lincoln Heights to, for the first time in history to redevelop at a time when they have been, you know, disinvested in for so many decades. Um, but some great news we're able, that's coming that this board has said, we're gonna make sure Lincoln Heights is not left behind. And, uh, you know, the fact also that we're closed the gap on the, the gun range, I mean, that's historic. I mean, that's a whole nother meeting, but that is, uh, I just, I can't get over it. Cause we are talking about, you know, 50, 60 years. And so, uh, you know, they were happy that the county is um, not leaving them behind and uh, supportive. And we got some new homes that we, we also help open. So one of the things I did tell the Port Authority in the land bank meeting, we had a land bank meeting. That's another thing that we did, all three of us, uh, I think yesterday or Tuesday, I can't remember what day, all my days are running together now, but it was this week. But one of the things I was saying, there's money, state money to tear down. But we need some state money to build up. And so, yes, we're tearing the, these things down, but I want to tear things down with a strategy on what's going to be built up because we tear it down and it might sit years before we start building up, and particularly in disinvested communities and uh, poor communities, African-American communities, we see a lot of tearing down and that history is gone. People crying, I remember this used to be a business, this used to be that. Yes, we tore down a raggedy, what people saw as being raggedy, but what did we build up? And I want the buildup to be a lot quicker 
uh, so we don't just tear down. Yes, there's money for tear down, but we need to be identifying money to build up before we start tearing down and let it just sit empty. So I did, uh, and it was not just for Lincoln Heights, but other areas that we're seeing uh, that happening. Also, um, in addition to that, I also um, went to, of course, the 100 stop of the 513 relief bus. Y'all know how I feel about the 513 relief bus. Not just me, but how people feel about it. I can't go anywhere without people stopping me, telling me thank you, uh, saying it helped them, going back to the bus, telling them it's been helpful, of uh, someone's life being saved because their glucose was way up and they just said, well, I'm here, I'll go ahead and check it. You know, they didn't think anything was wrong and had to be rushed to the hospital because, you know, if they didn't check it, who knows what would have happened to them. Uh, people who've come to the bus about to ready to commit suicide were able to shut those doors and have those doors where you can't hear when you, you know, we made sure you couldn't hear on the other side. And Tower House counseled them, connected them, and saved a life. Uh, those are the kinds of things. Uh, Tower House said they serve a lot of people, and they do. But they said on this bus, this people, they thought they had everybody. But when they got to this bus, they was like, well, these are new people we had never touched. So this is uh, Hamilton County on wheels going out to the community. So the 100 stop uh, highlighted that 15,000 people have been helped with our mobile uh, style called 513 Relief Bus. 15,000. Yes, there's more people need to be helped, and we're going to stay on top of it, people in the pipeline. We need to get that out the pipeline, but I don't want to diminish that 15,000 people received help. Uh, with 30 different zip codes. We're going to 30 different zip codes. You don't have to come downtown. We're coming to you. That was uh, phenomenal. I want to give a shout out and thank you to Duke Energy Foundation. They presented a check. Uh, they chose us. We didn't. We didn't even go after it. They said this. Uh, their people got together. Uh, that's on that committee and chose this project. And they presented a check for ten thousand dollars for the five one three relief bus, the work of the relief bus. And I want to thank them. And we got that at the hundredth stop. And then our health commissioner. We had all our partners. There's so many partners. I don't even want to start naming them. Uh, at some point, we do want to name them, but I don't have it in front of me, so I don't want to miss anybody. But we have so many diverse partners that are with our bus that goes out to the community. Uh, we even had food. Uh, going back to what uh, Vice President Driehaus was saying, how do you take the food and repurpose it and not waste it? We have uh, someone who came, and that's what she does, uh, her business, her uh, nonprofit, and she was feeding the people. And it was just, it was just remarkable. Um, and then um, I want to give a thank you to our health commissioner, our county health commissioner with Hamilton County Public Health. We announced that we are now having birth certificates. You can come to the bus and get a birth certificate at no charge at the bus. That's amazing. We're bringing the birth certificates to you. Uh, and that's you would be a surprise how many people don't have their birth certificates. So uh, very excited. More to come. Uh, also want to give a shout out to Trevina Adams and Scott, our, our driver, uh, was doing some incredible work with the 513 relief bus. And um, uh, Congressman Landsman office that reached out to us. They're doing a veteran appreciation, and we're going to partner with them. So we'll have more information about that, helping veterans with the bus. So we're very excited. Um, also, today's a special day. Bootsy Collins' birthday. Happy birthday, Bootsy. And uh, very excited uh, all that Bootsy and his wife Patty have done uh, giving back to the community over the years. And also, uh, a lot of times, you know, because Bootsy's around, we don't really know what we really have when you, you know, Rock and Roll Hall of Famer Bootsy Collins and uh, played with James Brown Bootsy Collins. And um, he is also... We are proud to have him as a founding inductee of the Cincinnati Black Music Walk of Fame. And people can go down there on his birthday and y'all want to play with Bootsy, right? Go on down there and uh, play the drums, play, the, play the, uh, the, the keyboard, or you can play the guitar and be in the, in the video with Bootsy Collins thanks to the augmented reality technology uh, that uh, the Black Music Walk of Fame has. Another thing that only Hamilton County has. I don't want to keep bragging about Hamilton County, but you know, we have to brag a little bit. Um, so uh, just wanted to say happy birthday to him. And then uh, my last thing, I believe, um, uh, I 
I'll save the last one when we get to it on the uh, on the calendar. Um, I think that. Oh no! More importantly, early voting has started, ladies and gentlemen. Early voting has started. You can go down to our board of elections. Another great thing we have here in Hamilton County: the best early vote center. Um, I don't want to brag, but we do. Um, early voting has started, and you can. Um, Go now. I think we open at uh, 8.30 a.m. until October 31st. And uh, then, of course, Election Day is November 7th. But early voting has started. So we wanted to highlight that for those who uh, want to know, have we started voting? Uh, that's all that I have right now. I will open it up to, oh, I know I don't. I have a by leave. Should I go to those before you? or? Sure. Yeah, I'm going to go to these by leaves. Yeah, we have two appointments, and we want to thank everyone who volunteers to be a, on our boards. Um, uh, we have two appointments to the um, to the Cincinnati Zoo board. Uh, they are Pars Parker who, and Jennifer Castellini, and. Uh, Anything, Vice President Treehouse? I, I, I'm happy to support both of these. Um, I think these individuals, uh, one of them already serves on the zoo board, and the other one is very interested in serving, so I think they'll be a, a tremendous asset to that board. Absolutely. Commissioner Dumas? Uh, no comments other than um, I'm glad that we're filling these vacancies. So, Awesome. I make a, uh, I make a motion to approve by leave number two. Second. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Treehouse? Yes. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. Thank you. Now, Mr. Ludo. Thank you, Commissioners. Uh, just a quick file leave comment. Just uh, uh, happened to be out at the 911 center yesterday. Uh, went out with uh, Holly. I want to thank Holly for uh, picking up sandwiches for the night shift crew. Commissioner Driehaus stopped out as, as well. Um, it, just always great to see the employees out there. They just do such phenomenal work. Uh, had the opportunity to listen to some of the stories of some uh, recent incidents. I know the board has been passed on uh, to them. Uh, just about some incredible things and um, and patience and perseverance and and resilience as these folks take in uh, calls from people in some of the the worst times of their lives and have to navigate them through that to the best possible conclusion. And fortunately, most of what we heard last night did have good conclusions, but we know that's not always the case. Um, another one that did have a good conclusion. I did want to um, speak as we're on the topic of the communication center. Um, congratulate communications officer Olivia Couch. She was um, recently, I guess, inducted or, or provided with the uh, agency Stork Award for delivering her first baby over the 911 uh, communication <laughs> system. Uh, so uh, obviously, there's times when this when uh, these employees have to deal with people on their worst days, but not unforeseen that they're also dealing with people on some of their best days as well. It just may not happen as often. Uh, but want to thank uh, communications officer Couch for um, for all of her her work and for her work on that particular day as well. So that's my comment, Commissioner. I do have one uh, by leave item for you today. By leave number one, which is a budget adjustment. Uh, there are a couple of different items in this adjustment. There is the appropriation of some additional lodging tax dollars, uh, about five hundred thousand um, dollars, so that we can continue to meet our obligations of pass throughs. Uh, in that fund, uh, there is the appropriation, again, speaking of communications officers, uh, there is a first responder grant at $176,000. The board's going to be acting on that uh, later, on that resolution later in the agenda related to that actual grant. This appropriates the dollars for that. Hold off on a further explanation <coughs> until we get to it. Uh, and then we have a $600,000 item related to um, needed operational funds down at Paycor Stadium. This is for uh, additional uh, escalator and elevator maintenance, uh, some building repairs, cleaning, uh, seat repairs, HVAC repairs, some additional costs that have come in over the course of the year and uh, fuel costs, uh, uh, waste removal costs that have gone up uh, that is needed to uh, wrap the year up. Uh, that is the uh, budget adjustment. That is the by leave commissioners. Uh, the administration recommends approval. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you. I'll open it up. Vice President Drea. Um, no questions. I have a comment, though, related to the stadium maintenance. I, 
you know, we, we do this periodically where we invest quite a few dollars in the maintenance stadium, and sometimes it goes um, under the radar. And so I just want to start pointing out that um, while we are not in serious negotiations at this moment in time with the team, uh, we will continue to invest in the county asset as we have over the, the term of the lease. And this is yet, yet another example of us investing in the infrastructure of the county's asset, which is the stadium. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Dumas? Um, thank you. I also wanted to comment about the stadium maintenance. Um, Jeff, we have a, an agreement that we will spend so much each year on maintenance. Is this 600000 more or less than what was in our agreement, or is it f flexible each year? So, yeah, so th this per, your, uh, the, the, in the lease, we have capital maintenance. You're absolutely mm -hmm. correct. It is specified um, as a specific number. Um, the operations budget is really handled like any other department. Um, where on an annual basis we budget uh, a given amount. Mm -hmm. It's um, in in total um, close to $10 million annually. Um, so it, like any other department, what we tell an agency like this or, or a department like this, uh, when they come to us mid-year and they say, hey, we think we've got some expenses that are gonna, that we're gonna cause us to run over, uh, we need an addition to our budget. Uh, we say, well, we do budget corrections unless it's absolutely urgent towards the end of the year. So we ask people to live within their budget to the degree possible. And then when we get to the end of the year, we work with the department uh, and determine how much is actually mm -hmm. needed with the hope and expectation that during the course of the year, they're gonna, if they think they're gonna need a million, by the end of the year, they'll find ways to make it work so it's much less than that. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. That's all I have. Thank you. Um, uh, part of my by leave was, was kind of this point. Um, and had a chance to meet um, about uh, with you, Mr. Ludo, and, and the, the lawyers about, uh, I had some concerns about the lease and where we're going with this and be able to get a calendar out there that the public would be familiar with as we move into this very important decision that none of us have been involved with the original lease. We've got a lease we're trying to <laughs> work through that is very, very difficult and somewhat lumpsided as it relates to the taxpayers putting up, I believe, 96% of the cost. And that's why we have these bills, because we're putting up the majority of the cost. Uh, where most places they're putting up, uh, the public puts up maybe 33%, maybe 40% of the, of the burden. And I know that that is something we have to work on. But what I wanted to find out when we talked about there was that we had not been running over budget in some time. Uh, something you had mentioned, we stayed within budget. And this is the first time in a long time. Um, and I know you were very firm on that. I know we're, we want to be kind, but I want the public to know um, that I think this is the first time in, I don't know, 20 years that we've gone over budget. And I just don't want to make this a habit that they come back and they're over $600,000 over budget. We're already paying 96% of all the costs. So, um, you know, has this been a habit? I don't, I mean, I wanna, a lot of times we see this stuff, you know, adjustments or what have you, but if this is not a habit, I just wanna be clear. <laughs> you know, we're paying 96%. I mean, we're going in these negotiations, everything, and we wanna both go to the table in good faith but you know, ninety, you know, we pay ninety six percent. Then this is six hundred thousand, and I hear it's over budget. We hadn't done that, and I don't know. I think in the meeting they said I'm um, twenty years. So I don't know. I just I know you were you expressed some yeah, it's a, concern. It's, I just no, want to make a, sure they know this yeah, is not going to be a habit. It's a good it's a good question, and that that same message has been sent from our stadium manager to the stadium management that that we have to live within our budget. We have a budget cycle starts every year um, and we expect departments, no matter what department is from the, from the sheriff uh, to the engineer to the stadiums to live within, within their budget. Uh, so I've talked with uh, our stadium management group uh, as well to determine whether these costs are legitimate costs and whether we have bills that we have to pay and we do. Um, and so they have gone back to uh, the stadium operations uh, at PayCor to indicate um, you know, we'll, we'll work with you, but this can't be a, a habit, just as you said. Yeah. I just wanted the people to know that. I know you've said that privately, uh, but I wanted it because the people are the ones paying. We wanted to make sure they know that 
we're standing up on that. And they've got some new staff. I want to make sure is that new person going to be uh, uh, new person sometimes might not know what the system is. We're not going over. They said it's the, they claim they got a new sheriff in town, but we've got to tell them that we stand by the rules of staying within the budget. So that they don't, you know, they're new and they may not know. Just oh, we just, we just gonna. We, we see that sometime again. No matter what department it is, right? When someone new comes in and they don't quite know the budgeting process, et cetera, and and so our staff has to inform them of what that is and how this works year to year. Yes. Thank you. Please let the new person know that this board is not. <laughs> we don't want to come in with a whole lot of overruns. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, anything else, uh, Vice President Triazzi? Anything else on this uh, commissioner doing? No. Okay. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve uh, by leave number. Is this one? Commissioner Reeves? Yes. Commissioner Trey House? Yes. Commissioner Summer Dennis? Yes. Second. She's second, by the way. Uh, second. You forgot to get her to second. I'm so sorry. That's all right. Yes, she's second. second. You got it. We start over. Let's do it one more time just in case somebody come back and say, we're not going to give them the 600000 <laughs> you know? It's kind of rough. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve by leave number one. Second. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Driehaus? Yes. Commissioner Summer JMS? Yes. We got our prosecutor attorney there. He's, is that okay? Okay. <laughs> okay, anything else, Mr. Ludo? Okay, so we will move now. Oh, I have one other thing. I'm sorry. In my comments, uh, Victus was, I forgot to announce, is it Victus? That's mm -hmm. the company. Uh, I would just want to thank my colleagues for meeting with them. Um, the thought was looking at the amateur sports uh, where they have tournaments every weekend. We invest in big ticket items, you know, these stadiums. And then when the season's over, they just sitting. I'm a great American just sitting right now, but still have bills. So we're trying to see if uh, amateur sports, which is always every weekend are we missing out on that money and then how can we it's not like a rec center it's more a revenue generator it was about 90 uh 93 million or more we're missing out on so they're looking into that uh i wanted them on a little earlier but i know uh, mr ludo uh, indicated we had some staffing changes so we weren't able to get them going until the fourth quarter I wanted a little bit earlier so we could look at our budget and have some more data. But I do want to thank everyone, my colleagues, as well as uh, those uh, partners. I believe Blue Ash uh, has called and wanted to meet with them, uh, OZ Davis. So a lot of people that's in the sports arena. So I want to thank them. And I think it's a good time, considering we're being asked to you know, look at an arena. <laughs> and we're also asked about what we're going to do with our stadium, how much and just seeing are there areas that we're missing because we do have a lot of amateur sports and a lot of champions. Another bragging point coming from Hamilton County, of course. Okay, so I just want to thank both of you for meeting with them. Okay, Mr. Ludo, we going to the calendar. Oh, no, not you yet. The engineer. Mr. Mr. Craig, thanks for joining us again. You hadn't been around in a while. <laughs> I haven't, and I'm glad to be back. <clears throat> The, the dreaded COVID got me, so oh, no. uh, glad to be here. Uh, just one item in front of you today is a resolution authorizing a second amendment to Capital Electric Line Builders uh, contract for traffic signal maintenance. Um, I know the wording on the agreement is kind of confusing, but let me kind of cut it down to non-legal terms. This is the third year and final year of the contract for Capital Electric. And this is the third amendment to the overall cost. So the cost is increased over the three year period. So we will be going out again <clears throat> this year to, re to get new bids for this. So this, this is for work that we do uh, when there's an accident to a traffic signal, somebody hits a controller box or a signal pole, and we need to call out a company that can come out and has the materials on hand to make those repairs quickly. Um, and then we seek restitution from the, the vehicle owners. We work with the prosecutor's office on that, but that takes time to get that back. So this will increase the current contract amount total right now at 150,000 up to 250,000, which is an increase of 100,000 out of the road and bridge fund to get us through the remainder of the year. Okay, open it up, Vice President Driehaus. Sounds good. Commissioner Duda? No questions. All right. I make a motion to approve item number one. Second. 
Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Treehouse? Yes. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Aluto. Uh, item number two is a resolution authorizing uh, the administration to enter into an extension of the interim agreement uh, for the Hamilton County Health and Hospitalization Levy. Um, I believe Assistant Administrator Webb is perhaps in the, there she is in the back, uh, is able to uh, give an overview of this and answer any questions. Absolutely. Thank you, commissioners. Um, this is an extension of the agreement. If you recall, earlier this year during negotiations, we came forward to ask for a first extension to get through the first six months of the year as we continue to negotiate the hospital contract with UCMC and Children's Hospital. There have been some legislative changes we're working through right now and making sure that the contract reflects that and identifies um, our best interests and the interests of Hamilton County citizens to make sure we're providing as much indigent services and medical care as the levy possibly can, given the resources we have. Um, as a result of that, we're requesting an additional extension. So it's a um, first extension of the interim agreement to go through the end of the year. That will allow the county to continue to fund the hospitals under the current levy agreement that expired at the end of last year, um, the same terms as the prior levy agreement as we continue to negotiate this contract with the expectation to bring a final contract to the commissioners by the end of this year. Okay, let me make sure I understand. Mm -hmm. The end of this year, you'll have another contract. We will have the final contract for the entire levy period. Okay. Yes. Now, you on here have December 31st. Now, we won't be around. So is this the, you'll have something for us the first or second week of December? That is our hope, yes. Okay. Just want to make sure. Um, I just want to make sure you had enough time for the extension. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, in addition, the, the way the terms of the contract typically run um, is we don't start payments. It's 10 payments for a calendar year beginning in March. So if for some reason the contract doesn't advance until January, being able to make payments through the end of December will keep the hospital's payments in line. Gotcha. Now, I had a question. How does this tie in some changes at the state regarding Medicaid? What I just want to make sure, because you got to watch the, st the state language. It gets <laughs> real tricky. Uh, and they begin, I don't want our dollars, right? Yes. Uh, I don't want the Medicaid dollars lower or our dollars become replacements. It's just the Medicaid, because we put this to be an addition, I guess, mm -hmm. to Medicaid so we can, we can help more people. You are absolutely correct, Commissioner. Um, and that's why this is coming forward because we are doing all of our due diligence to make sure as those as we learn more about those changes to the state and how that affects our dollars and Hamilton County and our levy particularly, we wanna make sure that we're protecting the interests of the levy and our um, residents of the community. Okay. And then can you also, when you're looking at, I'm sure you already are, but I just wanna mm -hmm. throw this out as some, uh, I saw another company left the exchange. Uh, I'm sorry, I missed it. Another company left the exchange, which would leave more people, you know, not able to get and need to get the Medicaid, and then they've cut down the expansion of Medicaid. So I'm sure you'll have all of that. I just want to put it on the table because when you say the state, they get real tricky. They got a lot of demands and not much money. And I just don't want us them cutting the expansion of Medicaid or that ex, uh, exchange situation happens. And now we are just replacement dollars of dollars that they normally would have picked up. Absolutely. And that is not our intention. It's, it's to do whatever we can to maximize and add value um, as many ways as possible to be able to meet the needs of as many citizens and help provide that gap wh which they need when it comes to medical care. Okay. Thank you. Vice President Driehaus. Commissioner Dumas. Um, Lisa, as far as the final agreement, um, how much are we talking about? How much money would that be? Uh, the final agreement is st it's still within the context of our levy plan, right. um, which is, I'm going to quote Candace here, 14.4 million for UCMC and I believe 5.2 million annually for Children's Hospital. Okay. Thank you. I can get you the full levy plan if that's helpful, just in context. It would be helpful. As well. Thanks. Okay. All, okay. All right. Well, I will um, make a motion to approve item number two. Second. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Driehaus? Yes. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. Thank you. Uh, are you doing number three? Oh, no, you're not doing number three, uh, Mr. Little. I see Ms. Adams getting up. So Ms. Adams is back with us to talk through the uh, Workforce Investment Grant. Uh, this also relates to some of our ARPA funding. 
Good afternoon, commissioners. I am going over resolution number three. This resolution is with the Southwest Ohio Region Workforce Investment Board, also known as Workforce Council of Southwest Ohio. This is for a million dollars. As uh, Mr. Aludo stated, this is under our ARPA funding, and this is gonna actually fall under our workforce development that we have already budgeted for. Just as a little context and background for this resolution, the county's ARPA plan included this $1 million for an experienced entity to be more effectively coordinating workforce development efforts to increase the number of residents trained, support services provided, and to strengthen connections between businesses, communities, and workforce development programs. During our stakeholder meetings, we heard them loud and clear that they wanted to help businesses hire and residents find jobs. There has been a gap between connecting people with those jobs and businesses with people who are seeking those jobs. So it was in our best to go ahead and work on a coordination to make sure that we had one entity, kind of a one-stop shop to work with community partners and to make sure that people had a one-stop shop to go to for these efforts. The contracted funds will be used to enhance coordination of workforce development efforts through a new website to serve as a centralized hub for workforce development resources, develop an, an enhanced ecosystem map to be housed on a website to expand awareness of the workforce resources available to residents and provide nav navigational support to job seekers and businesses. And they will also launch monthly visits to Hamilton County businesses to learn more about the employer and provide additional ways the employer will connect with broader workforce initiatives. Another wonderful thing about this initiative is that the Workforce Council will be working with a lot of partner organizations within Hamilton County. So they will be working with Cincinnati Compass, they, who will address workforce challenges of the immigrant and refugee communities. IBEW Electrical Training Center, who will increase coordination, awareness, and enhance access to training and certifications and electrical apprenticeships. Supply Chain OKI, who will improve workforce coordination for low-income adults and youth to find good-paying jobs and address barriers. And the Workforce Innovation Center, who will deepen and broaden the use of existing tools, such as the ecosystem map, community-wide dashboard, and more to increase access and data sharing. And as you can see, there's not a ton of people still here, but they're all with me, pretty much. Um, we have Pamela Massey and Jason, Jason Ashbrook with the Workforce Council, Brian Wright with Compass, Chris Friedel with IBEW, Jesse Simmons with SCOKI and Audrey Treasure with the Workforce Innovation Center that can help me with any questions that you may have. Thank you. Um, the fact that you guys waited it out with us, I really appreciate it. This is actually our shorter meetings, by the way. Um, but I would like to have you all come forward if you just want to say a word about, uh, about this and why this is important. We're not happy with you. You're leaving us. We can talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe we should have the others go first because we're not letting you. Know. <laughs> all right. No, all just right. kidding. Just fair kidding. enough. Fair enough. Well, thank you, Sarah. That was a great description, and and thank you so much, commissioners and administrator. We thank you for your consideration of this project. We are so excited. Um, we so we mentioned a lot about the Workforce Council, Southwest Ohio Region Workforce uh, Investment Board, but really this project is about the talent collaborative of Greater Cincinnati. We formed this new collaborative over a year ago, and the purpose behind that was really to take the existing entities that are delivering workforce development services in Hamilton County and throughout the region and seeing how we can create more opportunities for synergies and really looking at how we can build capacity among those existing providers versus creating new or duplicative programs. Um, we know that there is a lot of uh, challenges in terms of access to services or even awareness of services that are available for workforce development. So as Sarah mentioned and all of the valuable partners that are at the table, we have Cincinnati Compass, which is gonna help us focus on integrating immigrants and refugees into our workforce system. We need those individuals to help support and meet these needs that we have throughout the community with labor um, and to meet our local business needs, of course. And then we have supply chain OKI that's, that's gonna provide 
awareness and, and support for individuals that are pursuing high demand careers in supply chain and logistics. And then of course we have our Workforce Innovation Center at the Cincinnati Regional Chamber that's gonna really work on helping us connect with businesses and strengthen those business relationships and create opportunities to uh, provide company tours for individuals that really wanna find out what they wanna do when they grow up, provide those go and see opportunities. And then of course we have to our, uh, our friends at the IBEW and NECA Electrical Training Center. We believe they have the secret sauce when it comes to apprenticeship, especially with electrical training, and so we're really happy to have them a part of this project. The Workforce Council is serving as the fiscal agent for this project as well. So I wanted to share that overview, and most importantly, I wanted to just thank you again for your leadership and your consideration of this project, and I'll open it up for my colleagues if they wanted to share any information. Thank you, step right up. Come on up, Chris. Thank you. Thank you, commissioners and uh, 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 <laughs> Madam President. Um, I don't really have anything other to say than what Jason said, other than thank you for your consideration. This is going to allow us as a, a labor movement and a workforce development to expand our outreach into the community for uh, high school seniors to take advantage um, of opportunities to get into a career path. Or we're seeing more and more that there's more uh, interest uh, for the trades and for the apprenticeship. And as we know, uh, you know, over the years, vocational uh, training has left our school system and we're paying the price for it now with uh, needing labor and different uh, skill sets. So um, this is going to be, uh, uh, we're using an innovative na nationwide uh, uh, curriculum that allows uh, Hamilton County students, uh, high school seniors, to uh, either uh, do a computer mediated learning at school or they can come to our training center and, and learn it there, but they also get credits, points towards credits that helps them graduate high school also and gives them a, a, uh, a uh, advanced standing certificate for getting into our apprenticeship. So I wanna thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. with the Workforce Innovation Center at the Cincinnati Chamber. And I didn't know it was Breast Cancer Awareness Day and everybody was wearing pink. So this was a really great day to show up and be part of the whole event today, so thanks. But on behalf of the Workforce Innovation Center and the Cincinnati Chamber and the Talent Collaborative in this project, we're really excited about the initiative and the impact that it could have for employers in the region who have major talent needs, as you all know, and for people in the region who are looking for jobs that are self-sustaining so that they can build their lives and thrive. Uh, so they can get connected with one another and the great resources that we have in the county. So this initiative would give us the opportunity to scale further, faster, and better serve the people in the region. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hello, commissioners. I am Brian Wright, I'm the executive director of Cincinnati Compass. Uh, I want to offer two things. Uh, first of all, for something earlier, uh, thank you, President Reese, for the celebration earlier. Uh, I have some dear friends who did not make it in the struggle, and so to honor the people that have gone through the experience and have survived and uh, the organizations working to uh, fight against end cancer, I appreciate that, and so thank you for that. Um, secondly, uh, thank you for this consideration as well. So uh, I'm thankful for the partnership with the Workforce Council, the Workforce Innovation Center, uh, and at two higher levels, we know that immigrants are driving population growth in Hamilton County across the region. We also know we have an aging workforce. So immigrants coming into the region are about 82% are of working age. And so we know there's not a shortage of resources here, but it's about making those resources visible and accessible to the community members. And 48% of immigrants who have a bachelor's degree or higher, but they're underemployed. So having access to resources through language access and trusted entities and partners to access these resources helps people get to where they are, where they wanna go, have a higher earning potential, earn a better income, which helps benefit the entire county. So thank you for your consideration. Thank you, thank you for your work. Hello, commissioners. Um, mine will be short and sweet. I just wanna say thank you, and we appreciate you um, taking this project in consideration on behalf of the Workforce Council of Southwest Ohio. Thank you. I'll open it up, Vice President Treehouse. Yeah, no, I'm happy to support this. I, I, Sarah, can you remind us how much ARPA money is still available outside of this million? Or is this it? 
Um, currently, with our budgets that we've just done, we've actually obligated all of our funding with ARPA currently, other than a very small amount. I think it's only around like $7,000 with the budget changes that Holly had just brought to the table um, right at the beginning of this month. So currently, we do have everything either under obligation, and we have some more stuff that will be coming um, in the next couple of months with different things under broadband and a couple other grants. Um, yeah, the, the beauty of this one is that it's so collaborative. I mean, you've got everybody in the room, um, and you're hitting different populations, those that are uh, possibly entering the workforce for the first time and connecting them with the businesses that are looking for those employees. So, um, yeah, I think this is a great idea. I'm delighted that it's in partnership with so many well-respected organizations. Thanks. Thank you. Commissioner Dumas. Thank you. Um, Swarwip does great work. I think you're hitting, Jim, not only great work, but great results, um, having been on the board and presently on the board. I know you have the largest board I've ever seen. Um, what it, what, yes. Oh, my goodness. Um, and so you were, how, how many would you say, about 35? 50. Okay. And so you were thinking about possibly kind of, you know, you're doing great work, so, but if it works, work it, you know, but I was like, oh my God. So anyway, I'm happy to support this. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, I would agree. Mm -hmm. Being on that board, I said, yeah. Sorwip has taken collaboration to a whole nother level. Well. <laughs> uh, but uh, there are so many partners that mm -hmm. are needed uh, for um, workforce and especially now the workforce is changing mm -hmm. so I definitely um, support this because we have to attack it from different angles now we've got to be able to reach people where they are uh, diverse diversify the workforce uh, we just there's not one cookie cutter approach mm -hmm. to uh, reaching um, an employee or what the employer is now looking for because the marketplace is changing uh, what the employee is looking for now the employee has more power than ever before uh, COVID, they had a chance to think about it and say hey i might want to try something different um, then having the retooling as we said with the ibw if you want to retrain retool how do you do it so um, yeah i i think this is great because uh, we got the right partners and you're you're nimble enough to make the changes and to reach people where they are to try to get the results both on the employer side and the employee side so uh, i definitely support this as well um, i think it's another innovative way uh, that things that we're doing here at, at hamilton county um, i mean i can't help myself another another win for hamilton county <laughs> we need to have a chart another win for hamilton county <laughs> But uh, thank you, and I'll put a motion forward to uh, uh, approve item number three. Second. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Treehouse? Yes. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. Thank you all. Thank you. If you want to stick around to the end, but if you have to go, we understand. Thank you for being here. Okay, we go to the consent agenda, Mr. Ludo. Thank you, commissioners. I'll just walk through the consent agenda uh, quickly here. Uh, item number four uh, is a property transfer. This is MSD property that's owned by the Board of County Commissioners. It's no longer needed uh, for a public purpose, being transferred to Anderson Township for uh, green space and a greenway corridor. Uh, item number five is a budget adjustment. This includes dollars for uh, uh, $748,000 for body cameras, leasing and storage in the Sheriff's Office. Uh, it includes uh, build-out costs for the EMA satellite facility in Forest Park. Uh, it includes a boiler at the um, 230 East 9th that was f that's being funded through a federal energy grant. Uh, it includes Justice Center security improvements one at $1 million, several projects in here that was actually that's uh, being funded through a federal earmark, uh, and several projects uh, related to the county engineer. The total for that budget adjustment is $10.64 million. Uh, item number six is a request for a vacation of an easement right of way being uh, recommended to receive for the record. Uh, item number seven on your agenda is uh, this is something we talked about a little bit earlier. This is a uh, communications I uh, 911 item. This is a resolution authorizing the agreement uh, with the Ohio Emergency Management Agency. 
Uh, this is a $176,000 uh, employee retention grant uh, for the 911 center and for 911 communications officers. Uh, this is $4,000 per eligible employee uh, that uh, will go a long way towards uh, rewarding and, and retaining employees up at the uh, 911 center. Uh, item number eight is a grant amendment related to our community revitalization grant with Lachlan. Uh, this is the 2022 revitalization grant. Uh, this, uh, as the board might remember, was a $200,000 grant for property acquisition, demolition, and a parking lot uh, in, uh, in Lachlan. They need some additional time on the grant, so it ext extends it through the end of this year. Uh, item number nine and 10 uh, are both JFS items. Uh, we have a uh, $192,000 independent living services agreement with Nellis Place and a $365,000 group home services agreement uh, with Anchored Immense Movement. Uh, item number 11 uh, is a, another one of the, uh, the board has seen a couple of these over the past uh, month, a CDBG subrecipient grant, pass-through grant uh, for Food for the Soul for $75,000 for a refrigeration truck to assist with food rescue. Uh, item number 12 in a similar vein is a $75,000 CDBG uh, uh, subrecipient grant to La Soup, also for a refrigeration tr truck. Uh, and item 13, commissioners, is uh, a request for travel uh, from, for two employees in the treasurer's office to Dublin, Ohio. And that is your consent agenda for today. Okay, thank you. I'll open it up. Vice President Driehaus. Just want to highlight item number seven, the one about the communications um, department. You know, we were up there last night because there was a situation, and it was uh, during the night shift, where there was an individual, and I don't want to go into too much detail, I suppose, but uh, one of the dispatchers took a call where the life of the child in a car was at risk. Um, and she stayed on that line for 20 to 25 minutes. She alerted all the jurisdictions that might be impacted or might have to interface with that situation, made sure they were on high alert to secure the that there would be no loss of life. And um, these employees at the comm center are under constant stress because of these kinds of situations. You just never know when it's going to happen. So I just want to say that I'm glad to see that we are putting uh, some dollars into um, keeping these employees at that facility. And we've struggled to have folks uh, apply and, and then retain them um, at the 911 center. The new facility, I think, will go a long way, and we've all um, agreed that that's a good idea. Um, but in the meantime, you know, the, these dollars that help them feel, you know, gratified and appreciated for the work they're doing, I think, is really important. So I just wanted to highlight that one. Thank you. Commissioner Dumas? Just a couple items. Uh, item five, Jeff, um, it says facility projects at the EMA warehouse. Could we be a little uh, more specific? Because I'm thinking about our ability to move in as a satellite office. Yes. Does that impact that at all? Mm. Yeah, well, absolutely. It, it is the, uh, well, the $1.8 million there is the build out of the satellite space there. Okay. Uh, so design is complete. They're getting ready to go out for bid for that. Uh, so that bid, the bid should be awarded later on this year, hopefully with construction starting early early next year, uh, with uh, uh, move in hopefully Q three three early Q four of twenty twenty four. Okay, thank you. And then item number ten. Um, let's see, anchored in immense movement is a provider for JFS. Is that a new provider? You know, because we had inf I had emphasized that. It's, you know, try to get some new providers and also ones that are closer to the county. So I was just wondering, I, I don't remember seeing that name before. Yeah, Commissioner, I know it is a single source agreement, but I would defer to, I don't know if Laura is on the line. Laura can fill us in on whether it is a new vendor. Good afternoon, Commissioners. This is Laura. Absolutely. Um, a good question. They are a new provider and it's okay. specifically for um, a young person who's going to be emancipating our system and has developmental challenges. And so this provider is able to meet their needs uniquely. Um, so yes, so we're going to move that. Is that my? Are you still there? Uh, yeah, I'm here. Did you 
he, could you yeah, hear him? We had, some, we had some cross communication going on, yeah. I think. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. okay. They are absolutely a brand new provider. Okay. There's someone we're bringing on to meet the unique needs of a developmentally challenged individual who will be emancipating from our system and they're going to transition, help transition the young person into the adult a DDS world. Great. And where are they located? They're in Cincinnati. Okay. I don't have the exact address, no, but I can get that. that's fine. Yeah. All right. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. You're welcome. That's all I have. Thank you. I had a uh, question, just a point of clarification. Item number seven, uh, this will allow, uh, which I think I, I joined with Vice President Driehaus, uh, getting a um, up to bonus up to $4,000 based on criteria. criteria. So the 911 center employees that go over and beyond. The reason I'm asking about the clarification, this is a grant that came in from the state of Ohio. It didn't come in through our HR department system. This was, it was a grant. For, it was applied for directly from the 911 center. For Andy Knapp, I think, led the application process for that. Correct? OK. Yeah. The reason I'm saying that, I know that as we're going, I don't know how we do it, but I like this model because if there's employees that go over and beyond, I uh, just want to put that out there. I'm I'm supportive of some type of, I don't know what they call it in the in the, in the public sector. I mm -hmm. call it bonus in the private sector. But there has to be a distinction between someone who just you know I'm just here, I'm doing the basics, and then someone who's going over and beyond. Otherwise, it's no incentive to go over and beyond. You know, so um, I just wanted to say I did bring that up to you. I don't know. Uh, I know we'll have budget discussions and how that is done. But this one, I guess, was done because we were able to get a grant specifically for it. I think it's the right way to go. But I also I don't know if there's some kind of way. But the people that go over and beyond, there should be some incentive. Yeah, it's a good point, Commissioner. A couple of things on that. Um, uh, the uh, the conversation that you and I had had was one I think we were in substantive agreement on relating to pay for perform more of a pay for performance structure and the and yeah. uh, the compensation uh, process of of the county to make sure that we are able to reward people who are going above and beyond the call uh, as well and uh, we're uh, as you as you know uh, we started dipping our toe back into pay for performance a little bit last year as we start as we made a portion of the. Uh, of the general increase uh, subject to a pay for performance uh, would like to um, and I think you'll be seeing a recommendation from the administration to start moving a little bit more in that direction mm -hmm. uh, in the future there was years uh, where the county was not giving any compensation adjustments at all mm -hmm. and so when we came out of that we felt the need to provide some general increases uh, but definitely hear you on that I think in this particular grant I think some of the criteria probably relates a little bit more to when people were hired um, so it's a state grant, and I think they've said that, um, that only employees hired on or before this time period, um, because I think they were trying to, you know, this is an ARPA grant, uh, somewhat COVID-related, that type of thing. So I think that's a lot of the criteria that they're referring to. Gotcha. Well, I want to congratulate, uh, I want to thank Andy Knapp for going after this uh, grant um, and certainly support it, but I just wanted to highlight that because, you know, people go beyond then you know they need to be compensated a little bit beyond. So I'm happy that he went for this grant. Mm -hmm. uh, Commissioner Dumas, you had your light on. Well, I was just going to ask a question. I know Nick Crossley has an incentive program uh, for his staff. I don't know how they get their incentive, but do you remember that, Jeff? Yeah, uh, I can follow up in, on his particular model mm -hmm. in terms of what Nick does. Um, okay. At this point in time, for the broad base of non-bargaining employees, we did do a um, a 1.5, I think it was 1.5 percent um, performance-based bonus this mm -hmm. past year. Um, so, would like to try to gravitate that more into the general compensation mm -hmm. system, so that employees who are doing a really good job get rewarded for that um, and, and don't have an incentive to do otherwise. So. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So, but we'll follow okay. up on on yeah. Nick's model as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Did you have anything no, else? That's it. Vice President no. Treehouse, anything? Okay, I make a motion to approve and accept for the record items number four through 13. Second. Commissioner Rees? Yes. Commissioner Treehouse? Yes. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Commissioner Rees? Yes. Commissioner Treehouse? Yes. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes.